Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm going to show you how to make a flower arrangement. To make a flower arrangement, you need flowers, you need things that have blooms on them, you need some greenery, you need a vase. So I have my favorite vase. You can use a bowl, you can use a kitchen bowl, you can use a um, you can use a recycled container of something if it's pretty. I like to go to junk shops or thrift shops and look around in the dishes section because sometimes I find a vase that's really unusual that works really, really well for flower arranging. And this, this is I think my favorite and it was very unexpected when I found this. I just saw it and I thought this will probably be a, a good vase for an arrangement and then I just I just started using it for every one of my arrangements. So you've probably seen this before. Today I'm gonna to show you making an arrangement in this vase. So you need a vase, you need some chicken wire. The chicken wire that you use for a flower arrangement should be coated chicken wire. This is a little tricky to find. You can find it at certain hardware stores. The chicken wire has been coated in PVC. So it's either green or it's black, but it is wire. And the reason why it needs to be coated is because this is going to be sitting in water. And if you use uncoated chicken wire sitting in water, it will start to rust. So it can be done, it's not great. If you can find it, coated chicken wire, you need something to cut the chicken wire. So wire snips are good. A heavy duty pair of scissors will work. It will dull your scissors. You need some tape, some double-sided tape is good, or if you don't have double-sided tape, you can use normal scotch tape. And then something to cut your flowers with. So I love to use actual pruning shears to cut the stems of the flowers. Those are the supplies. Now, in terms of the flowers that you get, you can buy flowers at the grocery store, which I often do. If you have a garden or you know someone with a garden, cutting flowers from the garden. I mean, that to me is the ideal, growing the flowers yourself and then cutting the flowers from your garden and making that. I unfortunately don't have a garden, so I always have to buy my flowers. Another source for flowers is farmer's markets. You can find beautiful seasonal flowers at farmer's markets, or you can actually go to a flower shop or a florist and buy flowers at a flower shop. Flower shops are the most expensive places to buy flowers. And if you want to do this on a budget, I would say stick to the grocery store, stick to the farmer's market, or you can do a mix. So that's exactly what I have here. Today, I have some beautiful flowers from Union Square, the farmer's market that I go to regularly. These ranunculus, these anemone, these tulips down here, and these beautiful parrot tulips, which are so unusual. These are all the flowers that I bought from the farmer's market because they're seasonal. They're what the growers are growing right now locally. But I also have flowers from the grocery store. So these fillers, like these greens over here, which you do need, you do need some just plain greens. These greens, uh, these roses, these white roses over here, these carnations, these were all from the grocery store and they were very inexpensive, like each one of those bunches. So I'm doing a mix today to show you a variety of flowers that go into the arrangement. But as I said, go out there, look around, get creative with it. Making a flower arrangement to me is like painting. You're painting with flowers and greenery. And what I like to do is create a flower arrangement that looks like a very old Dutch still life painting from the 1600s. And that really is my inspiration for making flower arrangements. Those still life paintings are very dramatic. Uh, the flowers are often, they're often like curled around each other and one's drooping and a petal's fallen. Um, if you look really close, sometimes there are insects that were painted onto the flowers. There's something about those paintings that actually make the flowers themselves have a personality. It's almost as if the flowers are speaking to one another. And it's all based on the form and the shape and the color of the blooms. You'll have one bloom kind of looking up and then you'll have another bloom looking down at it. And it's like 
like they're speaking. So that's what I try to do when I make these arrangements. I'm not just taking flowers and cutting them and putting them into a vase. The reason they're beautiful is because a lot of thought and knowledge goes into making this. And I'm going to share that with you today. So don't be intimidated by this. Your first arrangement, your second arrangement is probably not going to be good. But if you keep doing it, you will develop an eye for it and you'll develop a technique. Choosing flowers. Another thing that you should think about when you're choosing flowers is your color palette. I said that making a flower arrangement for me is like painting with flowers. So I'm very conscious of the colors that I'm picking and how they go together. I usually start by finding a flower that's going to be my star flower. So when I go to the grocery store, I'm scanning, I scan through everything that's available, and then usually I land on something that is like, wow, look at that, that is really beautiful. Or I do the same when I'm at the farmer's market. And this time, when I was at the farmer's market, I was looking around and there was one flower that I thought, that is amazing, it looks unreal. And it's this right here. These tulips, these dark parrot tulips that were almost black on the inside, they left me in awe. And I thought, this is what I want to base the flower arrangement around. So I picked up the tulips, and then I started gathering other things based on this dark color. So, color theory. Who knows about color theory? I'm going to get my color chart. On the color wheel, we have colors, and then those colors have complementary colors. And the way you figure out what the complementary color is, is what's directly opposite that color on the color wheel. So if I have an orange flower, the opposite or the complementary color of orange is blue. If I have a yellow flower, the opposite or complementary color of yellow is purple. So yellow, purple, what they do when you find the complementary color is it makes the purple go, ah! that's what happens. Whereas if you took purple and put it next to red, it would go, ah. So you decide, maybe you want a flower arrangement that slowly starts with purple and gradates through red and goes to orange and then the feeling of the flower arrangement is, ah. What will happen is if I take my purple flower that was my star flower and I go opposite to the complementary color and I find yellow, something yellow like this beautiful snapdragon, those are complementary. And now what happens is the purple is going to go <gasps> right next to that yellow. And I'm thinking about these things when I'm picking the flowers. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the whole flower. I'm looking directly into this tulip and I'm really looking carefully at every color that's in there. So something on the inside of this tulip that you might not even think is really an important part of the flower is the stamen. That stamen is cream and that color is something that we all see. So when I look at this tulip and I look at every single part of it, there's even dust from the stamen that's yellow, I'm thinking, hmm, what else is there around here for sale that is cream? And look what I found. I found these beautiful ranunculus, which are cream. And when you put that against the tulip, it's so subtle, but the cream from the middle of this dark tulip next to these cream ranunculus, they just, that is what makes this a piece of art. So I started with the tulips and I saw the cream colored center and I found these cream color ranunculus. And then I saw these incredible anemones that were also at the same stand. And these anemones, look at these anemones, they have a very dark, dark purple center. 
And those centers are the same color as the tulips, but the anemones also have some pink in them. So then I go here and I look at the pink and I look around and I found some pink snapdragons. And look at how no nice those go together. So when I put all of these beside each other, I can see they all look really, really beautiful together because there are similar colors in all of them that connect them together. And this is what you should be thinking about when you're picking flowers. So what I actually do is I pull the flower bunch out of the bucket and I hold it in my hand and I take it over to another bucket and I hold them side by side and I say, do those work really well together? Let's actually do an example of something that doesn't really work very well. These orange flowers next to these anemones, they don't really make them pop. They're kind of, eh, they're just kind of mediocre. So you can see here that although these orange roses, they look very nice against the anemones because there are pinks in this bunch of orange roses. There's shades of pinks. They don't look as nice as this or they don't look as nice as these dark tulips. And that's what you need to do. You need to experiment, walk the flowers around, start to put them together, hold them in your hands, look at them together, look at them separately. And that's exactly what I do. And sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes I'm at the grocery store for half an hour, picking bunches out of different buckets and putting them side by side and asking myself, hmm, do those look nice? What's gonna be the star of the show? If this is all I have, I think it's pretty clear what the star of the show is. The star of the show is the anemone with that big dark center. So take your time, really look. Really look at everything. Think about what you're seeing. Ask yourself, do I like this? Is this beautiful? And I know at the very beginning, the answer to is this beautiful might be very hard. It might be very hard to come up with an answer to that because your eye isn't cultivated. But if you don't ask yourself, you'll never know. So that's what I encourage you to do. Ask yourself what you find beautiful and you'll figure it out eventually. So let's get started. I have my vase and I'm not just gonna stick stems in here. I'm going to create a hidden structure in here that will help hold the stems exactly in a particular place as I'm arranging the flowers. And in order to do that, you need a piece of coated chicken wire, which you cut to size. So for a vase like this, I want a square that's slightly smaller than this. And you can cut it with some strong scissors will cut don't use fabric or paper scissors to do this because it'll dull the scissors so you have your piece of chicken wire you put corner to corner you want to create a kind of loose ball of chicken wire this stuff is the ends are sharp it will cut you so that's why i'm wearing just some work gloves it helps so i've just kind of used the ends to secure itself together and i'm forming a, a very rough ball like this and then i'm going to take my chicken wire ball and i'm going to shape it into the actual vase, like this. But you don't want it to be too big because it does need to have space in between the holes. So that's pretty good. I'm looking to have the wire fill the surface area of the opening of the vase. And the, this stuff is great because it's very malleable. You can put it in here and you can move it around. Okay, that's pretty good. And you can see that this fits so nicely into there, but we are gonna secure it a little bit. So to secure it, you need some tape. 
use narrow tape. So this is like three eighths of an inch because if the tape is wide, it's going to obscure the holes of the chicken wire. I take the tape and I affix it securely to the edge of the vase. I pull it taut across the vase, affix it to the other edge. The reason I'm telling you right now to uh, affix this securely is because as you start putting stems into this chicken wire and as you try to move them around, this has to be secure. Because if it's not, if this tape isn't on there, then as, sometimes you'll go to pull out of a stem and it'll pull the chicken wire and all your previous work will start falling over. Or if it's off balance, the whole chicken wire structure will turn in the vase. So you want one strip of tape this way and another strip. Oh, for sake. I put another piece of tape this way. And again, like try to have a, a good inch going over the edge of the vase. It is clear, so you don't really see it, but I'm really pressing it on there to make sure it's secure. And then once the tape is on, I just go in and I scrunch it a little bit to give me more surface area that's exposed to the wire. Okay, so this is the structure for the vase. And you can see it's really in there. Now, we need some water if you're blooms are very tightly closed, like if you have roses or tulips and they're very tightly closed and you want your arrangement to have blooms that are open that day, then use warm water. The warm water will cause the blooms to open quickly. If you want the arrangement to last longer and you don't want the blooms to open quickly, then use room temperature water. I never use, I never use cold, cold water. Cold, cold water with you. Canadian. So, uh, flower food. Usually, some of the flowers you buy will come with flower food. I take that flower food, put it into the vada, give it a good stir. It's very nice to stir it with a real silver spoon from the 1820s, you know what I mean? Makes a big difference. Silver spoon. Real silver spoon. You hear that sound? Water in the vase. Pour it to within, oh, two inches from the top. Don't pour it right to the top because that's, those stems going in there, they're gonna take up room and the, they will displace the water. So I have a good amount of water in there. Now I'm ready to start arranging. The very first thing I do when I start an arrangement is I create what I call a base. So I cover some of this chicken wire and tape with something neutral, a green. So when you're buying flowers for an arrangement like this, if you want a beautiful dramatic arrangement, you don't just buy flowers with blooms on them. You need to buy some filler stuff. And the filler stuff is usually pretty cheap, like two or three dollars per bunch, and it's just green. And there's all kinds of stuff you can buy. You can buy eucalyptus in the wintertime. You could buy pine or boxwood. Today I have some stuff like this. What is it? I don't know. And I have this. Here's some other filler, beautiful green stuff. And then I have some chamomile, which I don't know if I'm gonna use because choosing a flower is a bold choice for a filler. So I'm just gonna put this on the table. I don't know yet. So what I do to create my base is I start to cut and place the stems dispersed around the vase. Now, here is a very, very important thing for all of you to know about putting stems in water. You never, never, never have leaves below the water line. If there are leaves under the water, they will start to rot and they contaminate the water. And that contaminated water 
goes up the stems of the flowers and kind of ruins the whole arrangement very quickly. You want this flower arrangement to last as long as possible, so you want to keep that water as clean as possible. It's also very important that this flower vase is sterilized so that there aren't there isn't bacteria in here. I always wash the flower vase out before I put it away with soap, water, and a little bit of bleach actually to just make sure it's completely sterilized. Then, when I'm making an arrangement, I'm very careful to make sure that any leaves that may be below the water, they get removed. So I would actually pick these leaves off. These leaves should be removed for the stem to be clean before it goes into the water. Okay, no leaves below the water line ever. I'm also, when I'm making my cuts on the stems, I cut diagonally. You don't cut straight like this, you cut on a diagonal, and the diagonal is, the reason for that, it's, it's exposing more surface area of the stem to the water so that it can suck up more water. Okay? Here's another thing that you need to know. You don't put everything you bought into the vase. You have to be very selective. The flower arrangement should look like it's almost growing out of the vase. And in order for things to shine and be showcased, it can't be too cramped. So just because I bought all of these greens, it doesn't mean that the goal is to take all of these greens and put them in here. I am, as I said, using these flowers and leaves to paint with. And when you paint, you don't just squeeze paint on the palette and put all of it on the canvas. You're selective about what you put on the canvas. So can you see this already? I've created a kind of base with, with just this greenery that already looks sort of like it's growing out of the vase because I've been evenly dispersing it around. It doesn't mean that they're all the same length. You don't want them all to be the same length. Now I'm using some of the other greenery uh, to fill in some spaces. And if I feel like, oh, this is a little too thick, well, thin it out a bit. And again, if there are leaves on the stem, like these leaves over here, you take them off. You do not put this in the water with those leaves on there. This is why Mrs. Dalloway said she would buy the flowers herself. Because you can't leave that up to anybody else. You can't trust anybody else to know what you need for your flower arrangement. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to use these little baby roses as my flower filler, just to sort of fill this out. And I bought these for this very purpose. I also, I think it's very important to look at the arrangement kind of all around as you're making it. So usually I pick it up and I actually turn it around in my hands just to look at all sides of it. Like see turning it around, I see there is one side that looks a little empty and you don't want that because even though there might be a wall that you're putting this up against, you want the option to be able to turn it around. And even just that little bit makes it better. And what I also do is sometimes I put it, I put the arrangement where it's going to live. You need to step back to look at something as a whole. That's very important with anything, even when you're painting. You don't just paint like this until you're finished. You paint a little bit and you step back to look at it from far away. And it looks very different when you step back. So you do the same thing with this periodically. Roses. These are really nice roses, baby roses. I'm going to make some of them pretty short and I'm going to make some of them longer. The funny thing is people don't really notice that there aren't leaves on the roses when they're in the arrangement, but it's an important step when I'm doing this to take off all the leaves. You don't have to. But because I'm using these blooms just as a filler, I just want the blooms to be the filler, 
if I stuck, see, see, if I stuck this rose in here with all these leaves, it just starts to get very cluttered. And while I'm building up the arrangement, I'm very conscious of keeping space in certain areas. So some of the roses are cut very short so that they're almost hugging the lip of the vase, like over here. And then some of the roses I've cut with a very long stem so that they sit higher. So there's really a variety of heights in here. And this makes this look very natural. And this is just the style of arrangement that I'm making. There are beautiful flower arrangements where everything is the same height, but I want this to look like an old Dutch still life painting. I, that's my inspiration. Those Dutch still life paintings are very dramatic. And the thing that makes them dramatic is that the flowers just look like they're almost wild. So here, here's what I was talking about before. Sometimes you put something in and you want to take it out and it's not easy to take it out. So yeah, you're fighting against the wire sometimes. And if it's not securely in there, you'll pull the whole chicken wire out of the vase. So I'm going to stop at this point. As I said, you don't, just because you have these roses, it doesn't mean you stick all of these roses in there. You have to look at the arrangement and you have to say, is this nice at this point? And am I going too far? And I've done this enough to know that at this point, I think I'm finished with the roses. I'm going to pick it up once more and set it aside and look at it from a distance. Turn it around. It's already starting to look really nice. I think there's one more place that I would like some roses in this corner over here. And I kind of know that I would like them right on this immediate corner. Like that. Beautiful. I'm also going to edit this later. I'm going to, when the arrangement's done, I'm going to go in and I'm going to snip little things out to create space and room. So stuff like this, it's in there now, but it might change later. Okay. My flower filler, I would say for now, is done. I'm going to put these back in water because maybe I'll use them later. The other wonderful thing about this is I am being very selective about what I'm putting into this specific arrangement. But these leftover flowers, they're not going to get tossed into the trash. I often use these leftover flowers to make small arrangements that I put elsewhere in the apartment. Like I, I'll take these flowers, I'll put them in a small vase, and I'll put them in the kitchen, or I'll put them in the bathroom. So fear not, these don't get wasted. Now I'm ready to start playing with the dramatic flowers. I'm going to start putting in the flowers that are more the colorful, showy ones. And I think I'm gonna start with the anemones. Because I know, I know for sure that I want these flowers to be in the arrangement. So what I do, this is when it starts to get a little intense, is I actually look at every flower and I ask myself, because they're all different. Every single one of these blooms is different. Sometimes the shape in profile is different than, like these two are different in profile. This is, this is arching more. So I look at all the stems individually and I ask myself which ones I want in there. So I definitely want this one in there because it's so dramatic. And I want this to kind of face outwards. I'm gonna, I have to look at this over here. I'm gonna place this. This step is easier to do from far away where you can really see, see where the blooms are gonna go and then step back. I'm gonna place one of these here. And the great thing is that 
it's it's not only color but it's form and this is kind of sculptural as well so when a flower head is drooping sometimes i really embrace that and i if i can see that it's drooping i turn it to its side so that i'm not just seeing its front but i'm seeing the dramatic part of the flower which is the stem that's drooping it's saying like oh i'm tired i think i'm just gonna lay down over here that that really is what's going through my head uh that I, i'm creating a dialogue with these blooms they're not just stuck in there randomly and then look at this this one is like standing upright and it's saying oh hello <laughs> it's very sitting in in high contrast to this one but i i want it to be straight i don't want it to be on an angle so in order for it to be straight i need to find the place in the chicken wire that's going to hold it upright like that now i think this already is starting to look great and at this point what i like to do is put in something very high i always want to create height to these arrangements something high something low something drooping something pert attentive <laughs> so i have these beautiful snapdragons that are so nice they were from the farmers market and i'm going to use these for height and and because i have a few colors what i'm going to do is again always removing the leaves because those leaves can't be on there below the water line i'm going to hold up different colors and see yellow how do what do we think about yellow or pink do you do i even need to ask you i think we all know look at that and look at that pink duh okay so always cut minimally you can always cut off more but you can't add height to the stem and check first oh 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 Oh. See what happens? Everything just changes when you add that height in there. That's really nice. Okay, now I'm going to add something else that's kind of tall. This, this lighter pink, another kind of snapdragon. And I actually I look at the stem and I look and I see Oh, there are some withered buds. Well, I can take those withered blossoms off. You can edit the stem. You don't just have to insert it the way it is. You can take leaves off. You can take blossoms off. You can take buds off. And I would like this to sit kind of like that, a little lower. So I'm going to cut off more than before and insert that stem. Oh, that's so nice. Also as I said, all the stems are not the same and sometimes you'll find another stem of the same flower that's very different in shape. So look at this shape, but look at this shape. This is very dramatic. So sometimes what happens is I end up switching out a stem for something else just because of its shape. So I'm going to take that out. So nice. You're going to stay there. And don't fall. You're going to stay there. And maybe you just have to look and see, you have to place it and see like, hmm, how what do how do we feel about this? And and when I put this here, I instantly know it's too much. This is dr very dramatic. We have these two high stems. We have these big bright anemones and as it is it's stunning but as soon as i put this over here it starts to become two loving hands at home and it goes away from being dramatic to just being oh look at the look at all the colors and look at all the flowers and that's not what i want so i, I oh, 
with every single stem, I ask myself, is this adding to it or is it detracting from the beauty that I've created thus far? And if the answer is, mm, I don't know, put it in, look at it, and you can always take it out afterwards. But a warning to you, every time you insert a stem, it's risky pulling it out, especially the further and further you go as this starts to get fuller and fuller. So it's better to decide outside the vase than to put it in and to try fiddling around afterwards. And I'm gonna say, I don't wanna put any more Snapdragons in there because it's already very dramatic and it's really beautiful as is. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my movie star flower. These beautiful dramatic parrot tulips. These are the star of the show. I don't know if they're the star of the show now. And sometimes this is what happens, they change. I thought these were the star of the show, but now looking at it, the, ane the anemone is the star of the show. But still, I know for sure I wanna put these in there. So I'm going to just start inserting them. And there's, these tulips are so dramatic because they're droopy. And that droopiness is what I'm gonna play with. I'm gonna really play with the way the stems are just bending over. Like, look, look at, look at that. It's going, oh. and I just, I love that. Now where I'm placing the tulips is also really important. I have one beautiful dramatic tulip over here. If I place this over here on the opposite side, I feel like that's not as powerful. It's just, there, it's, it just feels too far away and too, it just feels wrong that this is over here. So I think this needs to go on this side. Let's try it. I'm pretty sure it needs to go on this side. Yes. It's great. I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to keep going. Stop talking for a little bit and just let you watch as I insert the rest of the flowers. So you can see I'm just testing out flowers in different places before I put them in. And I'm continually looking at the overall shape of the thing and it really feels like there's movement in this arrangement that there's height over here and it's cascading down over here that's that's always an important thing for me when i'm making these arrangements you see them in those old dutch still life paintings movement in the actual flowers getting there we're almost there we're almost done look at that and again still variation in color so most of these ranunculus were just cream but there are little glints of pink on the edges of these leaves and that tiny bit of pink it does connect the pink snapdragons to the ranunculus so that makes me want to put this close to those pink snapdragons right over here sometimes you just have to fiddle a little bit to get yeah to get it to sit exactly where you want it Come on. Oh, come on. There. Now, at this point, what I'm going to start to do is edit a little bit. I'm going to take my tiny scissors, taking out bits of the leaves that are obscuring some of the flowers. So if it's a little full in places, 
you can just snip out some of the leaves just to create some space. And those little tiny edits, they just make the blooms feel like they can breathe a bit more. So this step is very important and I start to do it close to the end of the flower arranging process. I think I might like a couple more ranunculus on this side. Do I want something? Look at every stem because they're all different. That one's very nice. Every stem has to get a fresh cut before it goes into the water. There, we're done. What do you think? It has color, it has height, it has movement, it has drama. And that is what creates, in my opinion, a very beautiful flower arrangement. This isn't gonna stay this way. Part of the beauty of this thing is that it's going to change over the course of the next few days. The flowers are going to droop. Some of the flowers are going to open up more. You can twist things around as that's happening. And then the flowers are going to start to lose their petals. Petals will drop and fall. And that is the melancholic beauty of having fresh flowers in your home. There you have it. How to make a flower arrangement that's dramatic, that's beautiful, that's temporary, as part of it. Embrace it. Enjoy the process keep learning and uh bye <laughs>